welcome back to the crochet crowd i'm your host mikey today is my own design it is a bucket hat i like my hats not to be overly big at the brim so that i it doesn't interrupt with me performing whatever i need to perform <laughs> um so if i'm working in the garden i don't want it flopping in my face but um there's concessions that you can make the brim longer you'll have more yarn on the yarn ball to be able to do that if you wish so i think it's more of a personal preference so i designed it for me and i think it's fun and uh, we have to go settle down that dog. So we're work in progress right here at home. Hi, I'm Mikey from The Crochet Crowd and thank you so much for joining our channel today. I'm here to inspire you and create magic with your crochet hook. Are you ready to play? Oh yeah, that sounds good. Let's get. Welcome back to The Crochet Crowd. This was my friends at Yarnspirations.com. The adult bucket hat is a design by me and it's double stranding here, the Bernat Softy Cotton. Softy Cotton is one of my favorite yarns and Here's what it looks like in a blue format, just like you see. And there's some stragglers on the table. <laughs> and this hat, because it's double thickness, it has a bit of weight to it, which I pr appreciate as a hat. It's got a bit of texture and it's nice and easy repeats as well. So we're going to be using a five millimeter size H crochet hook and I am double stranding. Now with this particular hat, you can double strand using one ball if you wanted to from the inside and from the outside together as one and then you can just work through that and be able to do that or if it's easier for you you can just grab uh, two balls and just use the strand from each ball if you don't want to worry about too much. So let's begin and let's start the adult bucket hat now. Let's start off with the magic ring. What I want you to do is put two fingers out, get the stra stragglers and I want you to just take the yarn that's leading to the ball and wrap it around your two fingers and cross over the middle where they come together. I'll show you one more time. So two fingers in the front and then cross over. So you need to sneak up underneath this strand here. Notice that what side of the crossing I'm getting that on and I need you to scoop this yarn and pull through. And just carefully just slide your fingers out and using the two strands just keep them on top and just chain one to hold everything together for you. When you crochet this next, the first round, you wanna go over top of the, the two strands here and the ring and then therefore it's usable. Let's begin round number one. To begin round number one, you're not gonna chain three. I don't want you to. I just want you to start double crocheting into the ring and I need you to do ten double crochets right into the center of the ring. So we make sure we go up over the top of those two stragglers that are holding. Okay, so we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And before you go too much further, I want you to verify that you can actually see ten double crochets. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Once you have, you can see ten, pull this but not all the way and just pull that and remove your hook. Turn it over to the back side and continue to pull that straggler closed and this will close down the center of the top of your hat. Using a tapestry hook, uh, needle, I want you to hide in the ends and when we, when I say hide, I don't mean just you know put it in there and hope for the best. I want you to put it onto the needle and when you go through you have to be able to lock this in. So you want to go through and I'm still looking at the back and it's okay to be splitting fibers you really want to because uh, uh, magic circles or magic rings can fall out. So if you don't, if you're, if you're lazy about it. So just going back and forth a total of three times and allow those little stragglers to go in between plies and, and, and so on and making sure that you do that at least three times and then you can safely cut that. If you do not secure that, that will, this magic ring will fall out. That's a guarantee at some point. Now slip in your hook again 
to the two that are holding and I want you to attach it to the tenth stitch back. If you're not sure count it back. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and it's here. And pulling everything nice and tight just slip stitch and you've now completed round number one with a nice tight center like that. Let's continue to round number two. Let's move on to round number two. Chain up three which will count as a double crochet and in the same one of the join I want you to place in another double crochet. I'm going to show you a cheating technique at the end of this round to prevent you from seeing massive holes in the slip stitching and I'll show you that in a bit. But each stitch around is going to get two double crochets. So there's ten stitches around so therefore you'll have a total count of twenty double crochet. But I'll see you on the last one because I'm, I'm gonna show you a tip to be able to hide in any gaps that appear when you do slip stitching. And I'll be right back in a moment. So if you put in two into each stitch See this right here? That for new crocheters they end up with a new, a new stitch that doesn't exist. This is not a stitch. And so I'm gonna show you we've done two double crochets in each and I'm just gonna show you what happens when you join it to the top of the first. You end up with the gap. Do you see it? It's a little bit there and that gap will always appear. So what I'm going to tell you to do is this. On the very last stitch we have to put two into the same one. So start with the first one and do that as normal. And what I want to do with the second one is do a two together double crochet. This is a technique. This is not a stitch. And it's a two together double crochet. And I want to use the last stitch that I'm supposed to use. So I'm gonna wrap and go through, pull through and pull through two and hold. Now I want to use this space and create a leg of a stitch but not make it count as an extra stitch. So I'm gonna wrap the hook and I'm gonna go right into that space. And yarn over pull through and pull through two. Once you see the three loops you can yarn over and pull through all three. So what you've done is you've still maintained that you have only one stitch left that you were supposed to have. So you have two in the, in the last one but we created an extra leg because when I go to now secure it to the top of the first chain three the gap is completely gone. It's not, it's not a miracle. It's just science and we're going to continue to round number three and you can use that technique anytime you feel like it. Let's begin number three. In round number three you're going to chain up three and you are going to double crochet into the same one of the join. The next stitch is going to be one double crochet by itself. And here's the repeat information for the remaining of this round. The next one will have two double crochets into the same stitch. And then the next one has one. So just remember it's two and one. And I'll show you that technique that I'm, I will do at the end. But there should just be one uh, double crochet left over at the end. And that's just a matter of keeping in the counts. And I'll see you there in just a moment. So put me on pause. So this will be the last time I show you my technique before I just continue and I just do it on my own. So the last one is one, one by itself. So you got two and one. So I'm gonna do my technique. So just start yarning over, pull through, pull through two and hold. Technically I would finish that and join but I don't want that space. So I'm gonna yarn over and go into the space. Pull through, pull through two and hold. And then pull through all three. And therefore I'm not changing the counts but just filling in the space and slip stitch it to the top of the first chain three. And it's solid again. Let's move on to round number four. Let's move on to round number four. In round number four we're going to chain up three which will count as the first double crochet and then you'll double crochet into the same one as the join. Then the next two double crochets will be by themselves. So we have one and two. So the repeat for round number four is that there will be two double crochets in the first one. And then two double crochets will be by themselves. And I need you to do that all the way around for round number four. So I'm coming around on number four and I'm gonna do my magic trick at the last one. So the last two are by themselves but I'm applying that magic trick as I demonstrated twice before on the very last stitch. So that we'll pull it together and then join. Let's begin round number five next. In round number five you're gonna chain up three 
and double crochet in the same one as the join. And then the next three are gonna be by themselves. So one, two, and three. Then, then the repeat for this whole round is going to be two into the next one. And then one double crochet into the next three. And then you do to repeat that and I'll see you at the end of number five in just a moment. I'm coming up to the end of number five. The last three are by themselves and I'm just gonna do my magic trick on the last one. And then we'll begin number six in just a moment. So make sure you join it and let's start round number six. Round number six, chain up three counts as your first double and double crochet into the same one as the join. Now the next four are going to be by itself. So we have one, two, three, and four. And here's your repeat pattern for number six. It is two double crochet into the next one and then the next four are by themselves. So one, two, three, and four. Please do that all the way around for round number six. I'm coming up on the end of round number six, the last four by themselves. And I'm just doing my magic trick at the last one. And joining it to the top of the chain three and moving on to round number seven next. Number seven, chain up one and apply one single crochet in each stitch all the way around. This is part of our texturing that will be coming up and just one stitch, one single crochet I mean all the way around. I'll be back in a moment. I'm coming all the way around and you know my little trick that I have? It can also be used for single crochet to hide in the, that gapping space that can occur. So this is my last stitch here. I know that from experience but if I, and I can finish it and I can join it and you will always see a little gap there. So if you want to do a two together single crochet using the last stitch and the space, therefore you can hide that too. So just going in, pull, go into the space, pull, and then yarn over, pull through everything and then join and that will also hide in the loose end. See, perfect. Let's begin lucky round number eight. I want to begin number eight and we're gonna start the crisscrossing. Right where we're sitting is the incorrect place to be sitting and I want you to slip stitch just one more over and I want you to chain three. One, two, three. I want you then to come into the stitch that is before. The single crochet, see how this is the join? You don't want that. You want the actual stitch itself. Okay, so just yarning over and just going into the stitch itself. Pull through and pull through two and two. It's a, it's basically a double crochet and it's in behind. Now because I had you move over it, it will make sure that you're not changing the seam line location. Now the crisscross for the remaining of this round, you're gonna skip the next one and go to the one after and double crochet. And then I want you to double crochet into the one you skipped and I always go in behind because I find it easier. Some people argue saying that it's easier in front. If it's easier in front just be consistent and do it the way that you prefer. See, it really doesn't matter at the end of the day. It's not a, it's not a point to be fighting about. So just crisscross then. So you just skip a stitch, double in and then come back and do the one you're skipping. And do that all the way around for lucky round number eight. So I'm coming all the way around and I'm just doing my crisscross all the way. I would not worry about that special technique of joining but what you do wanna do is join it to the top of the chain three. You're not joining it to the double crochet because it's technically the chain three should be lying in front if you were crisscrossing in the same manner. So if you were crisscrossing in the opposite direction where the second one was in front then just handle that um, a chain three in that in the direction that makes sense to keep it consistent. Let's uh, now begin round number nine. Round number nine I'm just going to explain it to you because I don't need you to count so many stitches with me on camera. I want you to chain one and I want you to place in two single crochets into the first one. I would then want you to do 
a total of 14 single crochets by themselves and then that's the repeat. The next one is two into the same one and then 14 and you're going to do this a total of four times which will increase our round from 60 double crochet to 64 single crochet just to bounce it up a little bit bigger so that it will fit you beautifully. So right where we're sitting there was two then 14, two and 14. Please do this around for nine, uh, round number nine. Thank you. I don't know why I said thanks. <laughs> So I'm coming around the 14th one goes in. I can do my little special technique in order to get it to be solid at the end and you can decide what works for you and we're going to begin round number 10. So we're now moving on to number 10. So it's like before with the crisscross you're going to slip stitch to the next one first then chain three. So one, two, three and then come back and do the one that is just right before. Okay, so it gets your first crisscross in and then you can start crisscrossing as normal. So skip the next one, double crochet in the next one after that and then come back and just crisscross in the same way that you have been before and do that all the way around for round number 10. I'm coming up to the end of number 10. I would not worry about that special technique I've been showing you when it comes to these crisscrosses just to make your life a little simpler and make sure that you crisscross it to or sorry, make sure that you attach it to the top of the first chain three. Okay, so let's move on to round number 11 and we'll do that next. Round number 11, you're gonna chain up one and apply one single crochet in each stitch around and please do that and I'll be right back in just a moment and we're gonna recap because you're gonna have to do two more rows on your own and I'll be right back to tell you more about that as well. So one single crochet in each. Coming all the way around and going into my last one doing my special little technique with my single crochet and then attach. So let's talk about rounds number 12 and 13. 12 and 13 is a repeat of rounds number 10 and 11. So do one crisscross round and one single crochet round and please do that now for rounds number 12 and 13 and we'll pick up and we'll start doing the brim next after that. Let's continue to do that and I will see you back here in a moment and pick you up on round number 14. In round number 14 we're going to start doing the brim. So right where we're sitting we're going to chain three and we're going to in the same one that we're doing the join we're going to do a front post double crochet. Now because it is single crochet it's gonna be a little bit tight but that's what you're wanting. Okay. So the next one is one single or one double crochet in the front post and here's the repeat pattern to go around. The next one will have two double crochets in the front post. So we have one and two. So we're making the brim bigger and then the next one's by itself as a, as a front post double crochet. So two into the next then one, two and one and do that all the way around and I'll see you at the end of number 14 in just a moment. So I'm coming into my last front post double crochet and then I'm going to join it to the top of the first chain three. Okay, so let's talk the last two rounds nice and simple. Now I'm suggesting two rounds are left but if you wanna make it bigger and the, and the brim to be longer you can. I find like some of these brims in, the, in these stores are a little bit too long for me. So I, did, I decided that I'm only doing two more but if you wanna do more you can. So just simply just chain up three and for the last two rounds numbers 15 and 16 it's simply just one double crochet in each stitch all the way around. You can use that magic trick to be able to hide in that gapping if you would like to and please complete your last two rounds and try it on. See if you like it and if you want to add more to the brim you can do another round if you want and etc. and I'll be right back in a moment. I'm just finishing up my 16th round and I'm doing my magic trick and if you try it on and you want to do more just simply just keep on going don't not fasten off. Okay, so now I want to get rid of this yarn. I'm now completely done for myself for my own version and I'm going to just let that yarn just go through and I want to turn it to the inside of the brim. Using a tapestry needle the best thing to do is to go back and forth three times the better you are if you can split the plies. So when you go through just don't jam it between plies actually like uh, between the strands go in and, s and snap apart those plies and just do not mess with the outside surface and go through once in a slightly different path 
again don't be afraid to break apart these plies. It's harder to get out and weasel its way out if you're breaking plies apart. So two and then finally three times is a charm to be able to secure. Done. Nice and fast hat. It's almost six o'clock in the evening of my time and it's just been nice and easy to go and again not too big, not too small and it goes with the other one that we have now. So I now have two and I can throw one in my charity box if I would like to or just have options to wear it here at home. This is the adult buckeye hat designed by me for yarnspirations.com. We'll see ya.